This is Valley News Live at 10. So much concern about this election. We've been talking about this election for a long time. Good evening, everyone. It is primary election night in Minnesota, and we are set up for a showdown in November in the race for Minnesota governor. Incumbent Tim Walls is the projected winner in the DFL race for governor. He has 96% of the vote, only savior 4%. That's expected there. On the Republican side, Scott Jensen, who got the party's approval at the state convention, faced a challenge from Joyce Lacey and Bob Carney. Latest numbers show Jensen as the projected winner with about 90% of the vote, which means he'll go on to face Walls in November. On the Republican side in the race for attorney general with about 40% of the expected vote in Jim Scholes on the far side of the screen here is now the projected winner. He has about 54% of the vote. Doug Wardlow who was a contender has 34%. Sharon Anderson has 11%. He'll go on to meet current AG Keith Ellison on the November ballot. Ellison, the projected winner there in the race against Bill Don. Ellison has about 90% of the vote there with about half the expected vote in. Meanwhile, it's, it's not just races like this on tonight's ballots. People in some parts of Minnesota had to choose from different things besides senators or representatives. We go live now to Valley News Team's Nashe Taylor for more on what's at stake in the town of Crookston. Nashe. Stacy, Justin, some results have come in so far, but we're still waiting on that final tally. So far, it's getting pretty close with 54% of voters saying yes to this referendum. Now, Crookston residents are expected to decide whether or not to approve a referendum that would construct a new multi multi use, excuse me, sports facility within the city. Now, this was a question on the ballot for tonight, and if approved, it would allow the Crookston School District to spend nearly four million to build that facility. The proposed project would include a new artificial turf field along with track lanes and seating for more than 750 people and residents I spoke with today. They say they support what this proposed facility could bring to the community. I'm ready for change. I'm excited for change. You know, some news always great. The whole community is going to benefit because it's going to draw in other schools to come and spend their money here as well. So it's a win-win for everybody. So to have something close to our high school that, that the kids can be proud of, that the community can, can be proud of, I think is, is very important. Now, if this referendum is approved, that could mean higher property taxes for Crookston residents, but that increase would be based upon estimated market value. And for some residents, that could mean a $5 to $60 increase. In Crookston, Nishay Taylor, Valley News Live. All right, thanks so much, Nishay, for that live report. Now, this is one of two school district votes in the region. There's also a vote in the Eulen Hitterdahl School District for a child care center referendum. So far, 85% of voters have voted against it. And again, that Crookston one is leaning towards no so far as well. We are also keeping our eyes on a tight race in Minnesota House District 5 tonight. Incumbent Ilhan Omar, member of the progressive squad in Washington, is clinging to a 50 to 48 percent lead over former Minneapolis City Council member Don Samuels. Again, whoever wins this race will be the heavy favorite in what is a reliably blue district in November. Interesting race there. And for the latest results and breaking news right at your fingertips, make sure you've downloaded our app. It's free to download and use. Just search VNL News in your app store. All the election results there as well. Meanwhile, switching gears and talking about the weather tonight, let's go to First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch. Thanks so much, and the uh, ballots are in. The weather today, delightful. Most of us enjoyed gorgeous conditions. Check out this sunset captured from our Luther family forward view off to the west. A gorgeous sky tonight, and temperatures were warm in the FM area. And in fact, we did see near 90 degrees in southeast North Dakota, where we still have 70s from Detroit Lakes and Fergus Falls down through Sisseton. Cooler, low 60s near the international border for Langdon and for Hallock. There's a cool front slowly sagging its way southward, and it will impact our temperatures for tomorrow. Now that cool front is not kicking off much in the way of clouds or showers throughout the region, but it is sagging right through the central Red River Valley Dow on its way south and it will bring some more uh, noticeable changes for many of us temperature wise tomorrow. But tonight, 
it will be quiet, clear. Our wind will have a northerly component to it, but it won't be too strong. We'll be in the 50s as we start our day in Fargo tomorrow. Grand Forks, you can expect temperatures to sneak down into the 50s as well. We'll have details on how big that cool down will be. We'll look ahead at our next chance of rain in the forecast as we move forward here in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Thanks, Hutch. New for you tonight, a 21 year old man is facing attempted murder charges for his involvement in a shooting in Fargo over the weekend. Raiden Poitra was arrested on an unrelated felony warrant this afternoon in Dilworth. He's being held in the Clay County Jail. Police say he's linked to a man being shot in the arm Saturday morning near the 3300 block of 35th Avenue South. The woman accused of holding up a small town North Dakota bank last July has reached a deal with prosecutors. 44 year old Tessa Ann Marie Jacksaw is charged in federal court with one count of bank robbery after officers say she drove off with more than $7,000 from a Winemere bank. Federal documents say Jacksaw walked into the Lincoln State Bank and told the teller, quote, I have a gun and I want all the money, end quote. Prosecutors have asked the court to sentence Jack Saw to four to five years in prison. New information tonight, the wrestling match over the Pledge of Allegiance, the Fargo School Board meetings, has finally reached a resolution. In a 7-2 to two vote, the school board moved to not recite the pledge before their meetings. This debate goes back to February when a motion to have the pledge recited at meetings died for a lack of a second. The matter would then work its way back to a March meeting where it passed, then becoming the opening for every board meeting. But it was on the chopping block once again tonight after hearing comments from members of the public and other members of the board. The pledge isn't a show of our patriotism. It's an affirmation of our commitment and our loyalty <clears throat> to a greater cause, and that greater cause is freedom. Now, this will continue to be a hot topic. The board meets again August 23rd. A political candidate says he personally guarantees the pledge will continue. New tonight, a Canadian mounted police say they are looking for two kids from Saskatchewan who they believe may be in South Dakota and may be in danger. They say the seven and eight year olds are likely with their mother and her common law partner who has a history of sex crimes against children. RCMP believe the group is traveling in a dark blue Chevy Equinox Alberta license plate CGC 2492. Again, CGC 2492 from Alberta. Anyone with information is asked to contact 911. A Castleton man is facing serious charges after authorities say he filed fake insurance claims. The North Dakota Insurance Department says 58-year-old Paul Baumler filed 14 false claims, totaling $34,000 in payouts. Authorities say those fake claims involved an alleged ATV accident. He faces 10 years in prison, a $20,000 fine, or both. Check this out. New tonight, Fargo Police awarded a letter of recognition today to Travis Rorick, an asset protection manager for Walmart. On June 14th, they say he contacted FPD when he saw four people making suspicious transactions that appeared to be consistent with credit card fraud. When officers got there, they found the suspects in a vehicle containing items, including credit cards, which has been stolen from a local business the night before. Police are calling it a significant crime. A historic day as ground was broken to mark the start of construction on one of the largest components of the FM area diversion project. Construction will begin on the 30 mile long storm water diversion channel that will route water around the Fargo Moorhead metro area during major flood events. Area leaders say the project as a whole will provide permanent flood protection to roughly 235,000 people. What we are doing with this project is thinking ahead and not just accepting things as they are one year where it seems okay and then just crossing our fingers and hope it's going to be okay the next year because we know that isn't the case. The project is slated to be done by 2027. It's all funded by a public-private partnership, the first of its kind in the U.S. Hmm. Five to seven Fargo police detectives will soon undergo specialty training to be experts in downloading data off of phones. It's part of an effort to help put a stop to sex trafficking and the exploitation of children. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has details. Fargo Police currently only has three people who are trained in cell phone forensics, meaning whether it's a robbery, homicide, or a child exploitation case, those three people are hard at work, downloading large amounts of data and then pouring over it in hopes of helping prosecutors to a conviction. 
you know, one of our previous cases with a, a robbery suspect had, you know, 110,000 data points in terms of location. So to try and get through all that can, it can take some time. Which is why the department asked for help from Operation Underground Railroad, which will fund more technology and the training of five to seven more people to help tackle the workload. We'll be download a lot of cell phones um, and then we don't have a whole lot of people to review the data. So this training will really, really take care of our agency needs. The California nonprofit group specifically aims to fight sex crimes against children, something Fargo Police wants too, saying unfortunately those types of cases come across their desk too often. They're very sad. Matson says the additional technology and trained staff will not only make investigations more efficient, but will also hopefully expedite the investigation process so the wheels of justice turn just a bit faster. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Fargo police tell us the new training could happen later this year or early next year.